Welcome back. In this unit, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying our derivatives. These problems can oftentimes be more or less difficult based upon how difficult it is to find the derivative. We start out with related rates, and in related rates, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the relationship between two or possibly more variables that are changing at the same time. And what we want to do is we want to develop an equation between the variables. Sometimes it's using a geometry formula. Sometimes it's using Pythagorean theorem. That's where my examples are going to fall from. You don't have to memorize any of the geometry formulas. You can go ahead and, um, you know, I'll give those to you. I'll give you a reference. You can reference them online. You can put a, uh, take a look in your book. And what you want to do is you want to, first of all, I should have wrote it before this, before number one. I should have put in here. Well, what you really want to do is start with is drawing a picture. So draw a picture. And then fill in any, you know, identify what expression you're working with, whether it's a Pythagorean theorem or what formula you're working with, and identify what variables you have. And then you want to find that equation that finds the relationship between the variables, solve for any missing information you may have, differentiate over time. So I'm going to have to multiply each, and so we're doing it implicitly over time. So we're going to have like the rate of change of the y variable over time, the rate of change of the x variable over time. Let's say it's going to be dx dt, dy dt. And then finally, you can go ahead and substitute your values in that you know and solve for um, um, whatever the requested information is. Be careful of your units of measure. Uh, units of measure are important here, and you've got to, got to get your units of measure. So um, make sure that you identify them. Lots of examples for you. All right, number one. First of one, I give you this nonsense equation. We know that the rate of change of the x variable over time is 4 when x is 2 and y is negative 1. We want to find dy dt. Differentiate this equation over time. So you're going to take, it's going to be 3x squared times dx dt minus 4y times dy dt plus 5 times dx dt and that equals 0. We can plug in 4 for dx dt. x is 2. y is negative 1. I plug it all in there, and I solve it, and I found that dy dt equals negative 17. There's no units of measure in this problem, so you don't have to worry about that. Notice that I differentiated each of the variables over time. I'm looking at the rate of change of each variable over time. That's why I multiply by dx dt, dy dt, dx dt. In my second equation, or my second example for you, I have a ladder, a 20-foot ladder. The 20-foot ladder is the hypotenuse here, so I'm just going to write it as my z variable is 20 feet. And the ladder is sliding down the house. The ladder is coming down the house this way. The bottom of the ladder is sliding away from the house or away from the vertical side. I'm going to pretend there's a right angle there. Um, we're finding that the rate of change of this horizontal distance is, which I'm going to call x, dx dt equals 2 feet per second. And I want to know the rate of change of how fast it's coming down this vertical side. I'm going to call that y. So I know, want to know what dy dt is. I always let my vertical size be y, my horizontal be x, and my hypotenuse be z. Um, exactly when it's 12 feet above the ground. So that means my y variable is 12 feet. And I, I have all my information that I need um, except for my x variable. I don't know what x is. And I can use 12, 20 to find x, and I find x is 16 feet. One of the questions you're going to get with Pythagorean theorem a lot is when is the hypotenuse changing and when is it not changing? In this particular problem, the hypotenuse is not changing. That ladder is not changing sides. So when I go ahead and differentiate in just a moment, the z variable is going to drop out. So it's going to be x squared plus y squared equals z squared. If I differentiate, I get 2x times dx dt plus 2y times dy dt. And that equals 0. It equals 0 because this part right here, that ladder is not changing size. So therefore, it's not getting any smaller or larger. It's not changing. When you differentiate it, it's 0. You can plug in 2 and 16 for x and dx dt. You plug in 12 for um, my y variable. dy dt is the only, only one that you're missing. And I got dy dt to be negative 8 thirds. And that's going to be in feet per second. Now, it's negative because this distance is getting shorter. It's getting smaller. And since that distance is getting smaller, it's a negative measure. If you said 8 thirds of a foot per second down, that's fine. That negative is directional in this particular problem. 
In my next example, we're going to be working with a cone. We have this tank that's, uh, that's in the form of an inverted cone. And I give you some information about the original tank. This radius is four feet, or four meters. Yeah, meters, sorry. Four meters. The height, or sometimes we call the altitude, is 16 meters. We have water going into the cone. The water is flowing in at a rate of 2 meters cubed per minute. So dV over dt is 2 meters cubed per minute. And we want to know how fast is this water filling up, how fast is it headed up that way when the height or um, the altitude is 5 meters, I believe it says. Yeah, 5 meters. And so what we're going to be working with is the formula for the volume of a cone. Now let's talk about this for a minute. This one tends to be a little bit tricky. The volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h. Notice I had three variables. I have volume, I have radius, and I have height. In this particular case, I'm interested in what is dh dt. I want to know um, how fast is the water level rising. So that's dh dt. I want to know dh dt when the height is 5, the, the change in the volume is given to you. So I'm looking for the relationship between the height and the volume. I don't know anything about the radius. So what I want to try to do is I'm going to eliminate the radius out of this formula by using these initial conditions. If I use these initial conditions, the ratio of the radius to the height of a cone, because it's, it's going out nice and evenly, the ratio of the radius to the height of this cone is 4 over 16. If I solve that for the radius, the radius is the height over 4. Before I differentiate that, I'm going to take that information and plug it right there for the radius. When I do that, I can write the volume as, um, the volume is going to be pi over 48 times the height cubed. Once you have it that way, then I've just expressed the volume of the cone based upon solely upon the height, and I have the information I need. So I go dV over dt equals pi over 16 times h squared times dH over dt. I have information about my height, about my dV over dt. I plug in my values. I find dH over dt is going to be 0 0.407 meters per minute. This is a tricky one. This is definitely a harder one. One of the volume ones is very difficult. I can do another example for you in class um, when we come into class. But you've got to replace one of these variables to try to simplify the formula. Sometimes we'll look at all three of them changing at once, but oftentimes we try to simplify that equation. Another confusing one I find is when people, um, when we have all three variables changing in our, in our um, Pythagorean theorem. In this particular one, I have two cars, one traveling east, one traveling north. They're going towards an intersection, and I want to know the rate of change of this hypotenuse. Okay? All three variables are changing. This is getting smaller, the car is going that way. This is getting smaller, the car is going that way. This is getting smaller, and that's what I want to find the rate of change of. So, the car that's headed east, my x variable, dx over dt, is 90, and I'm going to let it be negative because that, si that, that distance is getting smaller, and it's 90 kilometers per hour. My other one that's headed, headed uh, oh, it's going south. I have it, I have it drawn a little bit incorrectly. That, this one I have, going, it's going north, but it, okay, let me just sketch it. Sorry about that. Um, it's the same idea. You just have it, uh, I don't want to confuse you. dx over dt is negative 90, and that's kilometers per hour. This one, the y value, it dy over dt, that's headed down this way, so that's at negative 60 kilometers per hour. And again, those are negative because the, their distances are getting smaller towards the intersection. And I want to know the change, rate of change of the hypotenuse. When, at the snapshot, okay, the first car is going to be 2 kilometers. That's the one going east. So the x variable is 2. The y variable is 1.5. And what I did is I used Pythagorean theorem to find my z variable. My z variable is 2.5.
And now you have all three variables. You have all the information you need. You differentiate over time. So it's x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Differentiate 2x times dx dt plus 2y times dy dt equals 2z times dz dt. The 2's will drop out. Plug in all the information, and the only variable you have is dz over dt. dz over dt I found to be negative 108, and that's going to be in kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour. It's negative again because these distances are getting shorter. So it's getting smaller, so this is getting smaller. So if you said 108, 100, 108 kilometers per hour, um, um, smaller, something like that, or negative, whatever, however you want to work it, that's fine. In our final one, we're taking a look at a spherical snowball. And the spherical snowball, um, the rate of change of the volume is 8 feet cubed per minute. And this one I did specifically because sometimes in, what they'll do is they'll change the units of measure, or change the units of measure, or they'll change which measurement you need. Um, if you think about the volume of a sphere, it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. So it's volume based on radius, but in this case I'm given the diameter. So I need to change that to the radius. So the diameter is 4, the radius is 2 feet. The 8 feet cubed per minute, that's the change in the volume, dv over dt and that's 8 feet cubed per minute. And you can use those units to know what's changing. If it's something cubed, it's volume changing. Now, it's growing, it's getting larger, neither one of them is negative. I can differentiate dv over dt equals 4 pi r squared times dr over dt. Plug in all my information, and I'm looking for the rate of change of r, so I got dr over dt equals, it's 1 over 2 pi, and that's going to be in feet per minute. When I put that in my calculator, and you're going to use your calculator on a lot of these problems, I got 0.159 feet per minute. Just on a side note, be careful about that. When I put it on, in my calculator, um, I have to make sure to put parentheses. I had to put it this way, where I'm going to put in 1 divided by parentheses 2 pi, and that gives me the 0.159 feet per minute. Be correct to three decimal places. Related rates problems, differentiate over time, set up all your variables. I'll answer lots of questions in class. If you have additional questions, we'll try to extend and do some more examples for you. Um, good luck. Hope it goes well.